to talk to me today. Yes, yeah, you're welcome. How's your day going? Everything's good? I mean, it's we're been a long media started. tour, right? So, <laughs> fine. I'm, I'm fresh now. <laughs> yeah? Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to, to just start delve into the movie. Um, you know, there's so many incarnations of the Pablo Escobar story that we have from documentaries and films, but this is the first one, at least to me, that stands out as a film critic and someone that's seen pretty much almost all. It's from a different voice. It's really not told through Pablo's side. It's kind of Virginia story in a mm -hmm. sense. What intrigued you about that uh, whole aspect of it, you know, based on her book, that, that it's her kind of point of view of, yeah. of what the world that she was into? Yeah. Yeah, but this is, uh, I mean, this is finding this idea of having Virginia as the narrator of the film, mm -hmm. I think is what, you know, what triggered us, you know, to do the film because we, we, we found it interesting. And I think mostly because um, it could be two reasons. You know, one of them is uh, that, um, you know, this drug trafficking world usually is a pretty um, masculine and violent and tough world, and we're used to that in films also, no? that it's mm -hmm. always male characters, and it's difficult to find a strong female character in that kind of, of environment. And uh, Virginia is there. I mean, she was there. I mean, she was so close to Pablo that she was sometimes in, the, in his meetings and his so we found it interesting to have the point of view, the, the point of view of uh, for women, to tell such a uh, tough and violent story, no? and because it's not useful for us. No? And secondly, because of her, I mean, she's a very interesting character. She was also, I mean, she's a, a top woman and, and uh, a journalist who's seen a lot of stuff. It's not exactly. just like you know. That that's the point also mm -hmm. that uh, I felt that she could bring uh, two different things. On one hand, his point of view as a journalist, and this you know through all the film. She's giving us like the big frame of the business and of Pablo's activities. You know, sometimes she's telling about what happened in the Congress and what happened with the law in Colombia, how they changed the constitution. How, as a journalist, no, she had her voice, this voice, sorry. and understanding too of it. Exactly, mm -hmm. an interpretation, right? She could be, she also could be ironical. She could be because she was pretty well learned woman. I mean, she's very, very clever and very, uh, but also. Uh, she could give us like the, the big frame from far away, but she could also give us like the close up on Pablo because they were mm -hmm. they were together, so they were uh, lovers. And then she, she through her eyes we could also reach these sequences where it's just about them both in a room or in a restaurant, where sometimes I think that you can see uh, Pablo better. You know, his I mean his psychology and his the way he mm -hmm. he thinks or he performs better than in the most popular sequences that everybody knows about, no? Because in those intimate sequences, you sometimes it's like... The personality, the right. personal moments where you get more of the truth that you wouldn't otherwise when there's like, you know, you have to perform for others almost. For sure, and as an audience, I'm sure that you can get uh, closer to, I mean, uh, to the situation and uh, in that kind of sequences, no? Because at the end, is you are just with them in a room, no? with those two guys, <laughs> oh, yeah. and you are the third <laughs> yeah, one. You, know, you don't want to be there, <laughs> you, want, you want to run away. Because sometimes, especially in the second half of the film, uh, Probably becomes uh, I mean, tough and, and like a monster, you no? Know, with her and then. Mm -hmm. But I think what, what we felt finishing the the first cut of, of the film is like uh, sometimes in those sequences you can you can see how tough and, and violent was Pablo better than in the other ones, no? That in the, I, in the big scenes where he delivers, you know, killings or you very know. much true. You see, because the other ones, you know, you have your standard kind of kill scenes here. When you that's what it was one thing that really stood out to me. You picked your spots to show the intensity. It's, it's very, you know, there's drama, there's lots of story, but when there's intensity, it hits you. Like that dog scene, you know, yeah. when, when he orders at it, that's something that sticks with you. You know, yeah. it sticks in your mind seeing the, the impact. Like that visual, you, you don't need a long killing or shooting scene. You just get a, you know, half a minute of that and you know what's at stake here, you know, and wh how ruthless he can be that other yeah. side of it. That's a, that kind of brings me to my next thing. How important was it for you to, to not just throw all these kind of like action or, or like these long kind of winded murder scenes instead of showing these like very high impact short scenes of like, you know, almost like cutaways in, in a way, you know, that you use to demonstrate his ruthlessness on the side. Yeah. You mean this, uh, like the one of the dog, for example, yeah. these this short sequences? Yeah, the thing is that, uh, you know, the, 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 real, the real history of Pablo Escobar is, is so wide and there happened so many things that I, from the very beginning, I had the feeling that I, that I had to use this kind of uh, narrative, you know, like uh, with these uh, small sequences, as you said, which are telling you like side stories, but all of them, of course, come from Pablo Escobar and right. belong to the same big thing. But, uh, 
those are killings and, and things that he, you know, he delivers, you know, like when he delivers all these guns in the slums and he just, uh, you know, is giving away money to the one who's killing random, in a random way, a policeman, and, which is pretty violent, I mean, it's like, uh, mm -hmm. it's, um, and um, so the question was, how did I, I... Yeah, how important was it to you to incorporate those kind of scenes yeah. instead of just like, you know, in, in other ways, you know, you could, you could have gone through a longer, more elaborate murder yeah. scenes instead of just showing these very high impactful, yeah. these, these scenes stuck with me as, you know, watching like, whoa, like I understood, you didn't need to give me more than 30 yeah, yeah, seconds yeah, yeah. of it because the impact's there right away. I understand, no, I mean, on, one, on the other hand, you know, uh, I, when I started writing this script and, and, and doing this film, I, I knew that, you know, we are telling about power score and we are telling about drug trafficking, so it was violent, especially in the 80s, today, of course, also. And then I, it was clear in my mind that the film uh, needed to have these three, five, seven moments that really stick in your mind, because, right. I mean, because otherwise it, it, would, uh, it wouldn't be fair, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a pretty violent world, so you need to show it, even if just in, a, in some moments. And, and right, I mean, it's, in, in my head it was like if those uh, short sequences uh, were making the film move very fast and with that kind of visual impacts also, mm -hmm. and then uh, after uh, rushing, brrr, you will stop in one of those long sequences that uh, Pablo and Virginia share, and, uh, which is a different kind of violence, like, uh, you know, there's some of them, uh, like in the restaurant when he gives her a present and tells her about what's going to come next for her, yeah. which is to me one of the most violent sequences in the <laughs> film. It's, and doesn't, it's, he's just this guy talking about what will happen and it's yeah. pretty violent. It's, it's, pretty he's violent. he's dictating the future and like yeah. kind of people's lives. In such a uh, casual way, like uh, yeah. having some potatoes and uh, listen, this is what's going to happen, pa 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 pa. And it's like, what? <laughs> you know, <it's, laughs> I think in that kind of sequences is where you see that he's um, a psychopath because uh, he doesn't feel, he's just telling... It's casual, you know, normal no, no, conversation. No empathy with her. Yeah. He's, he's not thinking what she will think. Actually, he's helping her. This is what he thinks, I'm, I'm helping you. This is, you need this now. This is your new life. Welcome to your new life. And for her, it's like, all of her world is falling apart. You know, everything is falling apart. And then, yeah. uh, but he's just telling, uh, these are the news, no? And then, that kind of sequences is different kind of violence, no? more psychological probably. Sure. And so this, we had this balance in the film, no? This, this uh, short sequences where, where everything rushes and you see what he was doing. Meanwhile, he was having dinner with beautiful women. No? So. Mm -hmm. You know, another part of this movie, <coughs> you shot this movie in Colombia entirely, right? That's yes. How, that shows. I think it's important to set the movie where the real story took place. And it's almost, Columbia serves as a character in this movie too, in a lot of ways when you watch it, because the setting feels so real and authentic. How important was it for you to have all of it, or at least you know, going into the majority of the movie shot there, to resonate that truth and reality of it? Well, that's, uh, that's so good for a film. I mean, that's, uh, especially in this kind of story, I think it's the only way you know, to have, because at the end, the real place is in the frame. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't have to do a lot, you know, it's there. So, of course, you help with the art department, uh, builds up a couple of things, but actually, we had the chance to visit the real locations. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, like the search block of quarters or, or the jail, where he was this, this fake jail <laughs> that he yeah. spent a year in. And actually, you know, the most interesting thing maybe is that we, we were able to film uh, uh, you know the end of the film in, in Tekendama residences, which is the hotel yeah. where, where they put the family when the family was uh, his family was taken. They were trying to fly away to Germany, but they made them go back to Colombia and they put them in a in a hotel. Mm -hmm. We were filming in the same hotel and actually in the same room where where his family was. So for is it kind of almost chilling for you just to think of it? This literally happened at that location. It kind of adds this. And, whole different layer. Yeah, yeah. And, and imagine for the actors, I mean, yeah. it, to me it was something else. To me it was like, well, this is the real place, you know? And so when we placed the policemen outside, like, you know, guarding the place and the family in the room and everything, it was a real place. And for the actors it was uh, something else because they were feeling like, uh, you know, it's, it's easy for them to feel like if they were the, the real family, you know, playing that sequence. How much directing do you really have to do when you have Javier and Penelope, people you are used to working with and people who've worked with together on projects before? Does it make your job that much easier to kind of have them, you know, almost give them direction them taking it their own way? How is it to direct someone that you're familiar with and, and that knows each other so well? 
I think for this particular film that mm -hmm. was very helpful. I mean, maybe in some other it's not that important, but I think in this film, as I'm sure you can tell, every sequence is very intense. <laughs> you know, <Okay. laughs> right. so it wasn't. Uh, sometimes you have like oh, we have an easy day tomorrow. You know, some transition, some. Uh, Every day we were filming something pretty intense. I mean, it's like you were filming something intense, and then what do we have tomorrow? You you could you, you were checking the, <laughs> the schedule, <laughs> come on, you know. So, and that's tough. I mean, that's tough for all of us, uh, especially for them probably because they have to go through the motions. And and but also for me, I'm not used to, to do that kind of sequences. As some to me was something new also. And uh, so being so familiar, uh, three of us. I mean, I had worked with Javier before in a film, mm -hmm. Mandis in the Sun. And I hadn't worked before with Penelope, but we were pretty familiar with friends and uh, And that helped a lot because we felt very safe with each other. You know what I mean? They knew that who I am, they, they, know, they know, of course, what my work and is. And you can be real and honest with them, too, exactly. at all times, too, and they will understand exactly. that. Exactly. It's like you can skip the first uh, three steps, you know, the first three where you are being uh, polite and you have a long... Getting to know each other. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you yeah. can skip that. You can go straight for the to the fourth level. <laughs> <laughs> in, is, uh, doing this film, like while either on set or off set that you kind of maybe in your personal <coughs> directing life or just you took out of the, the performances, is there anything you kind of learned working on this movie? Mm -hmm. Well, I can think of, uh, on, one, on one hand, I, I, I've never shot violence in such a strong way like in this yeah. film. To me, this was something new and it was uneasy in the beginning, so it was like, well, no, it's, uh, it's not something that you... Uh, you, you live clean, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it kind of leaves that yeah. dirty feeling about it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that was uh, the tough for me, but uh, so that was part of the challenge also. I mean, I, I was also thinking, you know, I mean, I love the story. I wanted to do this film badly, you know, for many years ago I brought the script, so it's a, it's a passion project. It's not, uh, but uh, also the challenge of filming some sequences that I'd never before uh, to me was, uh, was interesting because, uh, you know, I love the films where, uh, I mean, the work anyway, uh, when you, uh, you have finished and and you have changed. You 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 have learned to do something new, mm -hmm. and you've tried different things that usually you don't you don't try. And so that's uh, personally as a filmmaker that was a very good experience, and I'm, I'm proud of it. And uh, and in terms of the work with the actors, well, as we mentioned, uh, I worked before with Javier, and we know each other very sure. well. But also in this film, uh, we had to we had to rush in a way because the uh, it, as I told you, I mean there is a lot of intensity in the film, right. and uh, so we had to move. It was good for the energy of the actors. It was good not to stop all the time and, and, and think a lot. Instead of thinking 20 times each decision, it was just two, a couple of times, you know, mm -hmm. and making decisions faster. And I think that was good for the film. And it, to me, it was a new experience also. You know, you've, you've done, you've been behind the camera, you've done a lot of work over the years, but what are some things you enjoy in your personal life, kind of to get away from the, the filmmaking thing that, that you have as hobbies or interests, that to, to almost get away in your regular normal life that you enjoy doing and are passionate about? You mean uh, apart from films? Yeah, apart from <laughs> films. Well, I, I, I still, you know, I started working in films as a, as a, as a writer, as a mm -hmm. writer for many years. I was working for some of the directors and, and then I, I love writing, so <laughs> when I am not making films, Actually, it's a kind of a relax for me because I can write. I can I, I, I publish uh, a couple of books in novels in, in Spain, not novels, but uh, but yeah, like um, short tales books, uh -huh. and, and I enjoy that a lot. So this is what I love to do most when when the f when filming allows me to do that because it's yeah. so oh, yeah, it's you are so busy. Uh, and then I'm, I'm happy between the films. Actually, between the feature films, I, I love to do this writing, and I also love to do documentaries. And then. Uh, each two films, I, I do a documentary in between, uh -huh. which is great because it gives you uh, like a different. I mean, it's it's real life. So when you I mean, usually being in you know in documentaries with uh, aid workers or you know in, in, in places or situations like uh, which are not uh, the nicest ones. Right. And uh, and I found wonderful people uh, all around the world. And so that part is uh, is is very interesting in terms of uh, your personal. Uh, uh, I don't know, growing, no? like yeah, you, yeah. You, so I love that. And finally, uh, any movies uh, or shows you're watching currently that, that kind of maybe inspired you or you're enjoying personally? Uh, any shows on, uh, you know, that you're into now or, or films you've recently seen? Uh, recently? Mm, let me think. I've seen again, it's not a recent film, but I was when I was coming in the plane, mm -hmm. I watched again uh, this uh, Sideways, uh, it's Alexander Payne's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. film, which I love. 
I love that kind of films uh, about characters, and I, I watch it again man, because I, I love his films. I love his work, Alexander Payne's, and, and so this is one of my favorite filmmakers. And uh, today, you know, and, uh -huh. and uh, I don't know if many others probably, <laughs> but this is the first one that came to my mind. So. Interesting. Thank you so much for your time for now. I really love the movie. Great story.